Probably one of the hardest parts of being a pre-med is just keeping track of all the things you need to do and finding the time to actually do it. As someone who just applied to medical school, there are so many things that I wish I had done differently in organizing my own journey. So then I thought to myself, what if I created something that, you know, I wish that I had that helps people organize their pre-med journeys. So that's what I did. Using a free program called Notion, which in itself is a game changer in organizing your life, I broke down the pre-med journey into its essential parts and created a template that enables you to plug in your experiences into those blanks. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use this template to organize your own pre-med journey, ultimately saving you time and letting you spend more time on the things you enjoy. So there are eight components to this template and if you can address all eight components, I mean, I think you got a pretty good medical school application. But before we get started, my name is Arvind. I'm a pre-med applying to medical school right now. On this channel, you'll find pre-med tips, my journey through medicine, and all kinds of other videos too that I'm trying to make. So if you're into any of that, a sub to the channel would be awesome. Anyways, back to the video. So like I said earlier, this template is broken up into eight primary components. The first one is your GPA slash classes. Your second one is the MCAT. The third one are clinical experiences and shadowing. The fourth one is leadership. The fifth one is community service. The sixth one is research. The seventh is the letters of recommendation. And the eighth are meaningful experiences. There are gonna be timestamps in the descriptions for every single one of these. The template itself is the first link in the description, so check it out as you watch the video. So let's take a look. So this is what you're gonna see when you click on that link. And if you've never used Notion before, no worries at all. I'm gonna break this down so anyone whoever can use this template. The first thing you wanna do is hit duplicate right in this corner here. What that's gonna do is add a copy of this template to your own personal Notion. And if you don't have an account, you can make one at the link after you click duplicate. Now that you've added the template to Notion, you can now edit it alongside me. One quick tip that I like to show people is if you are a fan of dark mode, what you can do is you can hit on Mac Command Shift L. On Windows, you can hit Control Shift L, and what that'll do is give you a nice dark mode, so some people prefer that. I'm gonna stick with light mode here, um, but just, you know, something to keep mind of. So if you're a fan of just like exploring things yourself and just, you know, finding guidance along the way, you can check out this how to use section and there's kind of like some general information that I'm gonna talk about in this video in text form. So that is accessible to you as well. And all these suggestions you're gonna see in various sections that I have these little like light bulb sections and you can delete those as you read them. I know they take up space, but it's just to be there in order to provide you some additional information about each section as you're filling it out. All right, so the first section is the GPA slash classes. So here, um, there's a little bit of information again, and also the first thing that we have here are your prerequisites. So this is a space where you can list all the courses that you've taken or that you're planning on taking in order to fulfill your pre-med requirements for med most medical schools. This is kind of a stricter list, so if you can meet this list, you're mostly good to apply to any any medical school that you'd like. Um, but some of them are a little less strict and won't require this many courses. So depending on what kind of schools you're applying to, that's something to think about too. But I think if you can meet all these, you're good to go, and this is kind of a safe way to go. Basically, you can put your course name here, you can enter whatever your course name is, what semester you're taking it, and then the status of it. These are just two samples that you can kind of delete as you're going through it yourself. And I have, you know, lots of samples put into the other sections too that you're free to delete as you go through. Um, but that's your prereqs. So this is a note place where you can note those down. So the next thing here is a GPA calculator. And this is according to how um, AMCAS or, you know, the, the organization that reviews medical school applications, their system looks at your GPA. So this is exactly how they do it. Um, they do it on a 4.0 scale. So say your, your your university has A pluses and they give you a 4.3 or something. That doesn't work at the AMC. They don't take you know anything above a four. So this um, calculator gives you your GPA, how the AAMC would calculate it. So basically what you can do, and this is all sample data here, you basically just have to enter in your class, what year you took it, and then the grade you received. So if I change this to a 90, for example, it'll change this actively to an A minus and a 3.7 um, in terms of the points, or GPA points that it gives you. And then you can find your GPA down here at the bottom. Another thing that's important is that medical schools also look at your science GPA and they call this the BCPM GPA, which stands for biology, chemistry, physics, and math classes. 
And so if your course corresponds to any one of those sections, what you can do is just check those boxes. So for example, intro anatomy, that's a, that's a biology course, microbiology, organic chemistry, that's a chemistry course. You can check those boxes and they calculate a separate GPA for that. And sometimes they value that above other things. So say you want to know, okay, what is my science GPA? What is my BCPM GPA? What you can do is hit this all tag toggle right here and hit your BCPM. And what it's going to do is organize it to just show your BCPM courses, you know, those biology, chemistry, physics, and math courses. And then it'll give you your average GPA here at the bottom based on those courses. Um, and you can also sort it into whichever year you're doing. So if you want to look at your GPA and kind of see how things are trending, if you're going on an upwards trend, you can look at that here as well. So this is a super valuable thing that helps a lot in understanding what is your GPA as of now and also your science GPA, which is also very important. I have credit here to Red Gregory is where I got it. I kind of adjusted it to be um, AMC specific. Um, but that is that. The second section is the MCAT. We all love the MCAT, I know. Um, this section, you know, is not comprehensive by any means, but what I have here is kind of a very general outline of things you should note down in your prep. The first thing I link here is another Notion page where I've compiled a bunch of different MCAT resources that are free, that include videos, podcasts, strategy guides, all kinds of stuff. Um, and you can hit this link here and it'll take you to that. That's really helpful when you're actually studying. But what I have here is a board where there are action items, okay? So these are some things that I think are very important in your prep and things that you wanna make sure you're doing before you even start studying. So the very first thing is to learn the basics of the MCAT. And under each one of these, there's a little bit of information. So for example, here are two videos that talk about that. Um, and then you know each one of them has a little bit of information. And what you can do here is as you're doing these different action items, you can drag them into the different sections. So like say that this is something you're working on right now, you can keep it in progress. And then when you're done with it, you can drag it into done. And so that really shows you like, hey, I'm actually making progress and I'm actually doing things. So um, that is something I find really useful here. Um, and so there's a little bit of different things here and I'll make another video on more specific stuff for the MCAT, but this is just general ways to organize your prep and know exactly what you even need to do. Um, and like I said, each one of them has a little bit of more information under it and you can explore that on your own. Now, clinical experience shadowing, probably like one of the most important parts of your application. And what I have here is different things that can help you track things. So this first table here is a place where you can track a clinical experience you're doing, right? So say you volunteer as an EMT on an ambulance. Here you could say, um, you could replace this with EMT hour tracker, and then you can put your dates, put your hours, and then you can sum it up. It'll automatically sum it up down here. And so you can keep track of that really easily. Um, if you're doing multiple clinical experiences, what you can do is duplicate this table and um, you just click on these these dots over here, hit duplicate, and it's gonna make another one. And you can rename that like, I don't know, hospital volunteering. And so you can have another one separate for that. Um, and so that makes you know how many hours you're putting in um, to these different things. And again, this is all just filler data. The next one is shadowing. So where you shadowed, what specialty it was, the physician's name, the date, and how many hours you shadowed. Um, this is a good way to, to um, calculate how, how much shadowing you've done. Here, you can talk about patients that you've seen. So I think that's a very important thing to do in terms of reflecting because you often tell these stories while you're writing your essays for medical school about how different patients impacted you and made you, you know, refine your interest in medicine and different things like that. So what you can do here is, you know, if you have a new entry, hit new. Um, maybe this story was at an EMT, you know, your EMS call, right? And so you can fill in the date, which activity. But what I want to show you is if you hit open here, you want to hit patient story here. And what it's going to do is generate like a little template of different questions to ask yourself about that story, right? So the first thing is, what even happened, right? So what was the story? What what occurred? 
Then you want to talk about what was your role, what was your impact on the situation, and then ultimately, how did it impact you and affect you? Those are the three questions you want to ask yourself for any of these stories in order to, for you to judge how you were impacted by them and how you're going to be able to use that story in your application and you know in life in general. So that is really cool there. And again, you can delete all this stuff. Just select it and delete really easy but that is your clinical experiences slash shadowing section and a way to organize those this next section is leadership so pretty simple here um, it's very flexible as a topic um, whatever the activity was so amsa is a medical club and you say you're the president of that you put your dates down and the same way you saw like the little template there you can do the same thing here so say i add another one here um you know tutoring or something like that hit open and then you can add this template here and that'll allow you for some fields to reflect you know your roles why was this important to you were there any meaningful moments in this experience so again very easy there community service is very similar to leadership you can organize it the same way the same way with the template um, for hospital volunteering um, and the template here is a little bit different you have roles responsibilities significance to self meaningful moments you know those small micro interactions and then the impact, how did you impact other people? And how did you impact the group that you volunteered with? And here, one tip is I recommend like volunteering for an extended period with an organization versus kind of spreading yourself a little too thin. I think longitudinal experience is always valued by medical schools and applications in general. So that's something to keep in mind. Next is research. Now, people say that research isn't required for medical schools, but my viewpoint is it can't hurt your application in any way. So I think that you definitely should try to involve yourself in some kind of research. Maybe not, you know, you don't have to do it all four years of your undergraduate experience. Just try it a little bit. Um, so here, this table is very similar to the community service you add whatever your lab program was, you can hit open, um, click on the template, and then very similar to the previous one, and just some questions to ask yourself and organize in terms of that. The next is letters of recommendation. So here is somewhere you can note down which professors you're gonna ask for letters of rec. I recommend getting like four to five, um, that's probably a safe number. And here I kind of say like what kind of recommendations you should kind of focus on. And the earlier you can decide who these people are, the better you can make your relationship with them. And here I just have simply name, you know, what kind of relationship do you have with them? And then what exactly did you do for them? And that is a good way to keep track of them. Okay, we gone through a lot, but this last section is a little bit different than the other ones, but this is your meaningful experiences section. So this isn't really noting down something you've done, but more so a space where you can reflect. And this kind of reflection really helps you when you come to essays because a lot of times, you know, we'll have an experience and, you know, two years later when we apply to med school, we can't really remember much about that experience. So here what we have is kind of a breakdown of different questions that you should try to ask yourself, you know, or even just look at every once in a while and say like, hmm, did I have any experiences in this particular category that, you know, I want to talk about? So, you know, maybe you look at this a couple of months after, you know, you start college, something you've become very passionate about. Um, in your first couple months and you can just list it down um, real quick and then you know you just have bullet points so you can keep it really broad this is kind of just a place where you can jot down stuff you don't have to have it super structured but it's just a place where you can talk about different experiences that fulfill these different things so I think this is also valuable but yeah, those are the eight different sections of this template. And I think that if you're able to look at your pre-med journey through these eight different subheadings, you're gonna be able to organize your pre-med experiences in a way that makes it a lot less stressful and makes you feel a lot more conscious of the things that you're doing in order to have a strong application. I know this was a lot, we kind of went pretty quickly. What I recommend is taking some time to just look at this, organize things how you like it. You know, you can definitely change things around how you see fit. Explore how Notion works. There's so much functionality here that you can kind of manipulate and play with. Um, and this is just a really kind of bare bones outline of how you can organize things. And I think that this is a great place to start in terms of organizing your experiences. But yeah, with that, that is everything. And I hope that this video helped you organize your pre-med journey. 
Um, this is definitely something that I think would have helped me a lot when I was going through it. And if you have any suggestions on how I can make it better or things I should add, things I should change, please leave it down in the comments. I would love to hear it. I just want this to be as best as it can be and as helpful as it can be. So I'd love if you guys could help me with that. But with that, that's the end of the video. Again, I hope this helped. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you're into that. Um, but I'm gonna keep more videos coming out about ways that I think that the pre-med journey could be a lot easier and things that we could organize a lot better um, and other tips in general and then also some funny videos and, and things that I like to do um, on the side as well. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.